I think this one, is the hardest open ever. I think one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> is your pop, is your phone? Have you ever been driving? Is it in your sock? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been driving and and your phone starts ringing, but it's buried in your pocket? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Under your seatbelt. <laughs> and it's an important call. <laughs> like you're trying to what, get it out. Once a phone is in a man's pocket, it, it's, that's it. It's not coming out. <laughs> and then you get it out, and it falls in between the seat and the middle. Phone, <laughs> it's, and it's almost gone forever. It's, it's just, it just keeps ringing. It's, 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 Anyway, yeah. this is actually a Bible story, uh, study. <laughs> this is a Bible study. And anyway, we'll be right back. Where are we going to be today? Judges chapter 6 and verse 11. And what are we talking about? We're talking about your epic message about uh, your destiny kind of finds you. Yep. So if you're looking for... Uh, purpose and destiny. Yeah, purpose and destiny. You're watching the right show. We'll be right back. Well, good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where do we wake up? I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. Good to have you with us today. And you know, I'm going to give you applause for last week. All the people that put in their name and where they're, or just where they're from, yeah. new subscribers. If you haven't done it before, do it again. We'd like to read them off today. Yeah. And then we do our comments. You had tons of great comments. We're having fun, we're laughing. It just made it... It was a great week. If you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We'd like to read that on Wednesdays. <laughs> and then also, uh, and then also uh, we have a, a way that you can text, or you, we can text you every day. Right, yeah. Jason will the text you every day, kind of what's going on with his day. Well, how do they sign up for that? Uh, that'll be down there in the, in the, they'll put it on the thing. Okay. You go to, oh wait, we know what it is. It's Living Word. Where does it go to? WakeUpTV.tv. WakeUpTV.tv. Wake yeah, go to WakeUpTV. And if you're a new subscriber, put down in there where you're from. And you can click the button and you can uh, uh, enter in your phone number and we'll text you every morning right. the show. And then if you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. I'd like to read that on Wednesdays. <sighs> Watch this clip. Watch this clip. We aren't here by accident. There is a plan. Psalms 139, you formed my inmost being. God put everything on the inside of you, in your soul, giftings, talents, desires, ambitions. He put them in you already because he planned you before the creation of the world. The God of this universe had already planned you to be born at such a time as this. If you haven't watched it yet, watch it. It's one of my favorite uh, sermons you've done. You're my fave, but it was it was so good. And really, the concept kind of goes up. I did the, I, the week before. I did all the services talking about on purpose. Yeah. And your purpose is revealed. And so Jason takes it up to you know the next I level. I just did a part two, kind of. I I had already had the message though. It was so interesting it's when so you were preaching your message. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what God's saying right now. You know. It really is because yeah. here, here's the problem. Over my span of being a pastor, almost 30 years now, the message of people want the purpose because you were designed for purpose. We all know that we're not here randomly. I mean, we, we exist for a reason. And so what people will do, though, is they make, they're looking for a per, just a, they're out searching for something mm -hmm. that God's going to bring to you. So it's like me ordering something on Amazon, and then I go drive in the city trying to find the truck that has it on it. <laughs> <laughs> rather than simply waiting for it to come to me. You see an Amazon truck, you're like, hey, hey I think it's on the there. list? Real see quickly, <laughs> real quickly. <laughs> they, they My Gillette Shaver, in there. <laughs> Gillette Shaver's in there. I know it is. <laughs> and so we're searching for something that is revealed over a lifetime, and God reveals your many purposes, because you've got a lot of purposes. Mm -hmm. But God brings your purpose to you. Mm -hmm. And we see this in Judges 6, 11. Uh, this is uh, Gideon. The angel of the Lord came and sat down underneath the oak of Oprah that belonged to Joash, the Abonites, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midian. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Mm -hmm. And from this whole conversation they have. Mm -hmm. right? And, and it's interesting that we try to get built up by so many things out here. But really the one that builds us up, because Gideon was feeling down. Mm -hmm. This is where, right here, this is where my building up comes from. That's Does true. that make sense? Yeah, you're not going to get a lot of props from the people around you over the over your lifetime. No. You, but you don't need other people around you to believe in you. You just need God to believe in you, and He does. And and what was Gideon doing when this great revelation He's comes working. to him? He's working it. He's kind of like Peter, fishing all night, but catching nothing. Right. He's kind of like Moses, watching his father-in-law's sheep in the wilderness. It's not his sheep. He's off in the wilderness, it's hot, it's thirsty, it's not worth it. And what he's doing doesn't seem to really matter to, to advancing his story right. or his agenda. He's just, for 40 years. 40 years. And so what was Elisha doing when Elijah found him? He was 
He was driving the ox hard, but one of the ox didn't show up. There was 12 ox in the, in the, in, in the group, but one of them didn't, wasn't there. And he, he was actually operating and pulling along with, as though he were the 12th ox. Right. He was doing what? Working hard, but it's stuff that didn't really seem to make a big difference. And, and I think that that shows with Gideon here too. He's like, he's doing, he's, he's threshing wheat in a wine press. He's working hard, but it felt pointless. Right. And, and so the, the question yeah. is, 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 does what you do sometimes feel pointless? Like you get up in the morning and that's your job and you, and you look at the life that you're facing and you think to yourself, well, how does this matter? And, and this is not advancing my agenda and this is not advancing my story. What am I doing? Why do I exist? There must be something bigger here for me. And what God is showing us is that we have to stay great at all the little things. What's right in front of you. Even when it <clears throat> looks like it's not producing what, what got Peter his destiny door open to him was that he, he fished all night for nothing. He was just working it. But, but being able to be faithful in things that even when they don't seem to matter. And that's, and that's the point, is being great where you're at with what you got and allow God to reveal your purpose. Our dad did the same thing. He was just great. He just worked. He worked so hard. And it's interesting that you watch his story and his purpose just, all of his little purpose just kept being revealed to him mm -hmm. because he was working great at being a provider, mm -hmm. great as a father, great as a husband, great at, in the church. Whatever God put there, he was just great at. And so that's our message. It is. You don't have to go out looking because people just go looking for the purpose. And they, and, and they get discouraged and they get down because, you know, they're trying this and that. Rather than being great, God put something in front of you, be great at it. And then allow God to begin to reveal like a puzzle piece by piece of what your purpose is in well, when, I, when I was a young man, I, I had these dreams, like kind of like Joseph, I guess. So I would dream of these singing in front of all these people, like yeah. seas of people. I would just, I had these visions would come to my mind uh, throughout the day. And, and, and I always thought, well, what is this? And I thought, this is one of my dreams that I might do this one day. I wasn't even a singer. I had no really desire to sing. But as time went on, by the time I was 17, I started singing. I was awful. But I would, I would, they were good. I would give my best. I got lessons. I was learning how to breathe. I got, you know, professional singing voice lessons, and I was also singing in a band. And but I remember the opportunity opened up because um, our wives were running the children's ministry, and they wanted a worship team. Yeah. And I said, well, I'll, I'll lead worship for the kids. Yeah. It was interesting. Was I began to try and build a, a worship team around the, these, you know, for the for the children's church ministry. Not a lot of people wanted to to go in there and you know show up early and have rehearsals and lead worship right. for kids. Yeah, everybody wants the big stage. Right. And so I ended up actually just using my own band because we yeah. I had a band that was playing like we were trying to play out. We were trying to be you know like the next big thing, and we were practicing our our butts off. That's so off. funny though. Is, is and that... I would just say to my band, listen, can we just do children's church? And they'd be like, yeah, let's do it. And we started writing songs for children's church, and we started actually we actually recorded songs for children's church, and. We would bring it. I'm telling you what, we would bring it every Sunday. It was fun. It'd be Full funny band. though, because you'd be at a club and talk. Hey, our next one is Sunday morning for the kids. Dome. <laughs> we're doing Father Abraham. Uh, you're gonna love. We it. wrote a we song a called song list. "Girls Rule, Boys Drool," or "Boys Rule, Girls Drool." And we'd get them all singing and laughing. And we wrote all these different songs for them. And we were just being great in that arena when all of a sudden the door opened for us to start traveling internationally and touring. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when that destiny was revealed, we weren't searching for travel and inter internationally and tour, but it was opened up to me through a guest speaker that came through and was just like, hey, I want to take you to India with me. Yeah. And on that trip, we led worship for 50,000 people. Oh, my God. So that dream came true, not because I was great or not because I was ambitious, but I think because I was faithful in small things. And then he got his part in uh, uh, the Wiggles, and that was really a big thing also. <laughs> I was like, pretty proud of my Thank brother you for that. the Wiggles. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. I can tell spaghetti, you're very spaghetti, proud. Spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti. Mashed banana, mashed banana. <laughs> See, it just goes natural. Um, yeah, I think I think you're trying to say banana. Are you trying to say banana there? <laughs> you trying to say? You know that his high school reunion, his friends. It had to be just brutal. What? Like. The Wiggles, any of the Wiggles, because you know my friend. Oh, the guys' high school you're in, not my yeah, high school. Now you guys know I the guys. About mine. Yeah, the guys. Like yeah. you know, his buddies have to be go. Oh my gosh, I can't even get along with. I can't even go out with my friends anymore. Hey, hey, fruit salad. <laughs> yummy, yummy. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. Hey, if you got anything out of today, partner with us. It allows us to really propel this message, get it out there. A couple ways: one, hit share on your thing, but number two. Um, a dollar an episode, five dollar, twenty dollars a month, whatever God puts on your heart. But we encourage you to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. 
uh, blessed to be a blessing. You want to pray over them? Father, I just thank you, Lord, right now for this, this message today, that what we're facing today, whether it's productive or whether it seems pointless, Lord, that we're going to be great at everything that we put our hands to that we are going to work unto you as though we're working for you, that we're going to work with all of our heart because we know that you are the one who rewards us. You are our inheritance and our portion, Lord. And I thank you and praise you, Lord, for the strength to, to keep persevering in the, in the face of adversity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. New subscribers. Oh, yes, new subscribers. We got Kathy Montanas from Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, she's close. Eliander from St. Louis. It's, no, it's STL. St. Louis. Not even close to St. Louis. It's STL. It's just called a. It's called an abbreviation. David Friol from Louisiana. Shay Johnson from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Deborah, that's and I always thought that Oklahoma City, like that was like kind of a, like come up with a cool name. Yeah, there's an Arizona city. I wonder if I there's a, there's a city for every state. New Mexico, New Mexico. <laughs> Deborah Miller from Polsbo, yeah, Washington. Polsbo. I've never heard of Polsbo. No, uh. Is that by uh, Yakima? You know, you should go see uh, Yakima. It is kind of pretty close to Yakima. Paulsbo is where my daughter-in-law's uh, family lives. No way. Yeah. I mean, not her immediate family, but like all of her extended family live in Paulsbo. That's so cool. J.S. from Mesa, Arizona. Uh, G. Is that uh, C.B. from Los Angeles? Yep. Eric Messier from Attleboro, Massachusetts. Oh, Eric. And uh, C.J. Benoit from Hemet, California. I think it's Benoit. There's more. Oh my gosh. Ju Ju Julie from Indiana. Sarah Simply Crochet and more from Wisconsin. That's oh, what come I'm talking on, uh, about. <laughs> what about Packers? Ann Willey from Phoenix. Uh, Veronica from Mesa. That's Arizona. Yes. Mrs. H. Marie Purify from Eureka, California. I like your name. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> from Corey, Eureka, California. Corey Frazier from Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin. Another one. That's and what I'm Samuel talking about. Samuel Smith from Minnesota. Welcome to. Welcome to Was Wake it Minnesota Up. Minnesota or Minnecota? It was Minnecota. You're right. Minnetonka. Minnetonka. It was you weren't even close. <laughs> it says Minnetonka. What is Minnetonka? You don't know, but it's not Minnesota. Look, look up Minnetonka. Where is it? Okay, we like to read our comments on Wednesdays. Yeah, I don't know why Minnetonka makes it reminds me of Dr. Leo Marvin. <laughs> Burn! <laughs> Burn! More fish? Okay. Comic Wednesday. Dre T writes, love the daily text reminders. I've missed the phones. Phone calls. Loved those. You know, what our, is that? Those are our, our hope calls we used to do. Maybe we got to get back to that. We haven't done those in a while. We used to call, call people. With, yeah, we'd be like, hey, this is Jason and Scott, and we'd it, read a little scripture. It was just hard, me trying to call a thousand people on a Wednesday. It just takes a lot of time. Yeah, well, we can get back to it, though. Okay. Yeah, we're going to start that up again. Uh, uh, Eric Messer says, I'm watching from Artebo, Mass. You guys are awesome. I heard Pastor Scott Anderson preach at the Ignite Church in Lakeland, Florida. That was like a long time That's ago. That's pretty cool. That's really neat. That had to be, put it in the comments, it had to be over 10 years ago. Really? It had to be over a decade ago. Hey, you remember, I remember. Mean, I'm still in contact uh, uh, with them all out there and nice. love them. And, uh, Gigi great. Rivers writes, I laughed at every silly dad joke. Makes my week better. Thanks so much. I've been leaving these on repeat at work, listening and reminding myself every day that I am meant for great things. And I was thinking about like listening and on repeat at work. I was, is she just repeating the dad jokes over and over again? <laughs> just not saying. Probably, probably not. Over I think she means the whole show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny because I'll, so I get in the jacuzzi. I'm a jacuzzi guy. Yeah. I don't care. So I put, now I got my little AirPods in and then I'll hit a, a, a show on, on, on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll go out there and, and listen, but then it's over before I'm ready to get out of the jacuzzi. So I'm, I just want Siri to repeat. Not repeat, go to the next one. So I go, Siri, next video. And then she'll just play the same one again. And I'm like, just stop. How do you, how, why won't you go to the next? I don't want to listen to it again. Yeah. But I will. <laughs> Jennifer DeMunich, De, De Munich writes, I was one of those that got the texts. I was one of those that got the texts. I was so mad at the company, not you two, when they stopped. Now you're my routine, so I don't need the text. But thanks so much for these Bible studies. So she's saying that she was part of, of the Wake Up. Text. Yeah. When we used to do text messages, there was like 200 people listening yeah. to us at the time. Right. They we had like hardly them. any subscribers. We were, that was like our first year. <laughs> right. So Jennifer, well done. You get like the longevity award. You've Boom. been with us since, since the beginning. Uh, you have to read uh, Donald L. Bartlett's. It's a really cool story of kind of what we've been talking about, uh, where the job and cut and pay and stuff. 
but all of a sudden God just positioned her back right where she should be. It's a really cool story. It's a good testimony, huh? It's a really good testimony. What God's doing. Fran G uh, asked the question, why did you mention hewn stone? And, and if you, so if you go back and watch the whole, if you go back and watch the whole episode, we read the scripture about don't you know not using hewn stone for an altar, and it's really hewn. the story was about not to to adjust how, the uniqueness of people. Right. Right, because the stones are us, we're the living stones, and not to use a tool and hewn people. Oh, it's so good. I hope that helps you. Uh, Matthew Mitchell, uh, really cool. It's difficult when others in your life who you love and care for, course to search for the negative in city, and that, it, it, find the negative in you, basically is what uh, Matthew's saying. And then can, but then talks about continue to live through God's word and not another human's doubt and insecurities within. And I oh, think that's, that's good. important. And, yeah. and even, you, you know, you can get into David. He had very reasons to live in insecurity because his whole family couldn't stand him. You yeah. see that his whole family couldn't stand him, but Rejected it's all right. By his fathers, when you, when you read the the Proverbs and the Psalms, I'm sorry, when you read the Psalms, you just see that David just got everything he needed from here. Yeah, this is where he got built up. This is where he got encouraged. Yep. This is where he got the strength he needed. The Lord is my all the men that he led aren't. for so long mm-hmm. now want to stone him. He's like, all right, well, I'm not getting it from you. I'm going to go strengthen myself in the Lord. Bring me the ephod. <laughs> Wait, the ephod. We should. Have, where's our ephod? How come we don't have an ephod? All right, we need one. If you're a new subscriber, put it down in the text down there yeah. where you're from. Yeah. And if you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. I'd like to read that on Wednesdays. Yeah, definitely read it. And uh, new subscribers do that. All right, watch this clip. Luke chapter 5 is the story where Jesus has just kind of hit the ground running. He's just starting his ministry. And he asks Simon if he could use his boat to stand on and preach to the crowd on the shore. He teaches this message, and this man's name, Simon, lets him use his boat. And then after Jesus finishes teaching his message. He says, put out now into the water and let down your nets. And, and this is where our story starts because Simon, he responds to Jesus this way. He says, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught a thing. I like that he worked hard all night. Say hard all night. He worked hard all night. He was being faithful. And it says this, but we haven't caught anything. He did something that didn't produce. It didn't seem to matter. Right? It, didn't, it didn't go anywhere. It didn't advance his story that night. But because you say so, he says, I will let down the nets. So he lets down the nets and he begins to scoop up more fish than the boat can hold. The nets are breaking. He calls over James and John, his partners. They bring over another boat. They're trying to haul in all these fish. The boat starts to sink. And Peter, or Simon, his name's not Peter yet, Simon falls down before Jesus. And he says, away from me, for I'm a wicked man. And Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men. That's a change of everything in this moment. This is Simon's moment where his life changes, where, where suddenly destiny is revealed, that, that why I exist begins to start him down this new path of his destination. The Messiah has called him first, the first disciple to be called. And he starts to follow Jesus. And what's going to happen is, is he's going to see the lame walk. He's going to see blind eyes open. He's going to see death get up. Dead people rise from the dead. He's going to see, he's going to watch himself walk on water. Like everything's changing. We're in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus looks at him and changes his name. Simon, you're no longer Simon. You're going to be Peter. And I tell you, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not stand against it. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in, in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What's he do? He says, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Simon just got his name changed to Peter. See, Simon, you didn't even know who you were. You're not actually Simon, you're Peter. And so often we're like, well, who am I, Lord? And what am I here to do? And then you're asking the right person because Jesus is the one that can tell you who you are. And Jesus is the one who can tell you what you're going to do. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, be in church this weekend. Yeah. Church makes life, wherever you're at, get planted in a house, get your family in. Every statistic known to man shows that church makes life longer, makes life better and happier. Uh, we have a huge upcoming event, which is the Raz Festival. Yeah, Revi- Revival Arizona, February 23rd here locally. We're going to be taking the church outside and preaching the gospel and worshiping God under the stars and praying. We have 14 churches joining us. Wow. So uh, we're going to be at Bell Bank Park at 7 p.m. in the Breezeway. It's called Miller Way. We'll be right outside the Goat Restaurant. Is that Miller Beer? No, it's a different kind of Miller. 
No, you said that. It's a, it's a Miller, different Miller way. Miller orange juice. Yeah. No, it was like a farmer named uh, Bob Miller. Oh, he, good old Miller. He had a special way about him. Did he really? Miller yeah, way. Miller way. And that's going to be February 23rd. Put it on your calendar. Marriage event March 1st. Anyway, have an epic, amazing, awesome day. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.